Texas is looking to advance to a regional semifinal for the 18th consecutive year. SMU trying to do that for the first time in program history. And we are underway in round two. Molly Phillips. That one batted out of play, and Texas takes the opening point. And Texas already testing Libero Uwabe, who's usually really good at committing to her base, but that's really Phillips trying to see what she can get away with. Now keep in mind, barring an upset at Stanford this weekend, this will be the final match in this arena for the five seniors, including Asia O'Neill and Molly Phillips. O'Neill there with the block. Asia O'Neill, 22 blocks in her last two matches. But the Mustangs get their first point of the night. Great coverage on Shimei's first hit into the block. Again, that hit probably would have been a kill yesterday. But she changed up her shot, read Asia O'Neill's hands, and got that tool. SMU 26 and 6 on the year. They won the American Athletic Conference going 18 and 1 in conference play. O'Neill denied. Texas takes the point up by one. Yesterday, Texas struggled early on in finding that fast gear that Jared Elliott says his team has to have. And right now, they look physically confident. They're playing well. They're finding their shots. Everything's looking good so far. They faced a team last night in Texas A&M that was 10th in the nation in blocks per cent. A little bit different matchup tonight. SMU comes in 73rd in the country in blocks per cent. Asia O'Neill, that one out of play. And we're tied at two. And a great hit by Purdue. Not the hardest hit, not the most physical attacker, but she's smart. She's going to use the hands in front of her in her favor. SMU hasn't lost a match in 61 days. In their final year in the American Athletic Conference. Winning the conference title. That went off the tape. Swindle. Asia O'Neill sliding over for the point. Great fly by Asia, but watch Swindle. Look how she freezes when she sets. She doesn't even move her legs, her arms. That's how connected she is with Asia O'Neill. And that's a lot to be a freshman quarterback. How's this for offensive efficiency for Asia O'Neill in her last two postseason matches going back to last year? 40 swings, zero attack errors, and 23 kills. Mustang setting it up. And touched by Texas, Shimei with the kill. Right now for SMU, it's the tool. Keep to win the hands as much as you can until Texas makes an adjustment. SMU one and four all time against the Longhorns. Again, this is their first meeting since 2016. Skinner off the tape and gets the point. It can always help you here and there. Sometimes it serves, sometimes it's hit. We didn't see too many back row attacks from Skinner tonight. Could be something Swindle was saving for tonight. Madison Skinner took over the final two sets last night. And that 20 kill performance, here's O'Neal. The dig by Asia O'Neal. Jenna Wenis. To win as they go. Another block. Point Mustangs. Coverage for Jenna Wenis has to be ready for that deep ball. Make sure there's someone committed in the middle back for those deep blocks because SMU isn't the tallest team. The timing could make the ball go deeper since they're not as high on the block. SMU prepped for this time of the year with a very tough non-conference schedule. Five matchups against ranked teams, including Nebraska. Wenis tools the block that time. Longhorns back up by one. Quick adjustment by Wenis, and she was good at that yesterday against the Aggies. If she hit into the block, she changed up her shot, figured it out, and usually got the tool. And the winner of this one will head to the regional semifinals, most likely in Stanford, barring an upset there. Ella Swindle, she had a double-double in her first career postseason match last night. 
SMU coming right back, neck and neck early on with the defending national champions. There is Sam Erger. What a job she has done. The AAC Coach of the Year in just her second season, 48 wins in two years. Pushed over by Phillips. Swindle sets Molly Phillips. Caught fire to end the regular season, hitting about 450 over the final month. Jared Elliott in his 23rd year, two-time national champ, nine-time Big 12 Coach of the Year. Here's Carissa Barnes. Charging in is Shimei. She was a star last night, gets the point there. Big approach by Shimei. She looked to be a little early. I thought she would have been late on the ball, but she has that hang time to where she can make adjustments in the air. This is a talented SMU team that features the American Athletic Conference Player of the Year, Setter of the Year, Libero of the Year, and Coach of the Year. Here is Casey Batenhorst, the Houston native, 31 aces. Make it 32. Perfect ace by Baton Horse, and it's no secret they want to take Maddie Skinner out. It starts with serve receive. Try and get an ace off her. You gotta avoid Carissa Barnes and Emma Halter scene. Again, this is just the third year in program history that SMU has made it into the NCAA postseason, but the service error allows Texas to tie it up. Sam Erger talking things over with Batenhorst again. Coach of the Year, Player of the Year. I mean, just an incredible performance by the Mustangs. who have won 16 in a row. Shimei off the block. Halter. Here's Skinner. Point, Texas. Longhorns by one. Hard tool by Skinner. She was literally using all the momentum, flying in forward. It saw the hands just off the net a little bit of SMU and decided to go with that tool, taking the cut shot. The two-time national champion, three-time All-American, and most recently named Big 12 Player of the Year, Skinner. Shimei missed for Texas, 9-7. Air by Shimei, but that was a great air. Huge swing, a little out of system, but still hitting hard. I like that spot to pull in a little bit more. Crowd starting to get a little boisterous here early on. Olawe, Shimei, again with the error. Another error for Shimei, again, a purposeful error, trying to take a little bit off and go for that deep corner shot. Right now, what she needs is some confidence. 4-0 Texas run. Longhorns hitting 545 right now. Ace Emma Halter. 5-0 run. And SMU will call a timeout. Halter with her 33rd ace of the season. Tops on the Longhorns. Texas trying to advance to the regional semis. So far in the first ever Texas, a story. No surprise, outside hitter Maddie Skinner changing things up, going off the hands. If she sees your block is not pressed up, she's going to go for your fingers and she's going to get that tool. Skinner, just like last year, getting better and better as the season has gone on. And when your best players are at their best in the biggest matches, like last night, the Texas is pretty unstoppable. Emma Halter, back-to-back -back aces. Six-zero Texas run. Longhorns, the second-best serving team in the Big 12 in their last year in the conference. Shimei. Able to tool the block. 
Shimei, who had back-to-back -back hitting errors, I said she just needs some confidence. And I like what she responded with. Not a tip or a roll, going for that hard shot, trusting her arm and getting that tool. Texas comes in as the second best blocking team in the nation, averaging nearly 3%. Here's Skinner denied. SMU charging back. It was going to be interesting to see how they would respond here in Austin after that 6-0 run. They're within three. Block completely in system for SMU. Look at the hands going back into the middle of the court, making sure it doesn't fall back when contact is made. Swindle tipped up by O'Neal and out of play. Texas somehow ends up with the point. Great hustle by SMU, but Asia O'Neal just doing what she does, which is read the court in front of her. One of her talents is reading the defense and making sure she keeps it in play, but she saw those blockers were not even in the air. They were not connected whatsoever, decided to go right for them. Just like they drew it up, O'Neal with a couple of kills. Now here's Kaylee Akana, 27 aces throughout her career in the postseason. O'Neal. the point. Skinner is so physical that if it's a tight ball and the blockers aren't up against you, she's going to put that ball right down. She has that length, that reach, and she has the power even when she's not hitting the ball. What do you make of the physicality of SMU compared to the team Texas played last night, the Aggies? Texas A&M is very physical. Their blockers are big, they're strong, they have long arms, and SMU is as well, but not, not as much as Aggie. Madison Skinner on the attack. Oluave. Purdue unable to get the point. They go to her again. Pushes it far, diving in. Sliding was Barnes. Skinner hammers one. That is in. Amazing volley for both SMU and Texas. But again, Skinner putting it right down the line. The first time she shows in line so far tonight. But again, she reads the block in front of her, and she's going to avoid the hands every single time. If this is any indication, SMU is going to have their hands full with Madison Skinner hitting 571 so far in the first set. Janae Barnes. Great day. More Skinner. Right now, SMU is struggling with the tips from Skinner. Especially the power tips, but what a dig from Clarissa Barnes. Former Southland Conference Libero of the Year, four years in a row, and doing good things here at Texas. Texas has 11 kills tonight. Skinner has six of them. 10-2 Longhorns run. Shemay answers with the point. It's funny, you talk about all the accolades and awards for this team. Shemay did not get one of them, but she has been terrific at the beginning of this match, at least carrying the team offensively now with five kills, and we talked about what she did last night in the win. 14 kills, 11 digs, hit 480 against Texas State. Skinner off the block. Madison Skinner. Skinner and O'Neal. Same goes for SMU. You gotta make sure one defensive player is committed to running down the deep block ball. It doesn't happen often. Usually with Texas, it goes straight down because their hands are a roof. But you gotta make sure that someone's able to run that ball down and protect the back line. So Texas in control, a far cry from the opening set last night that Texas dropped. If you're SMU, five of their seven kills today have come from one player, Shimei. What else do they need to do? Who are you looking to step up for the Mustangs if they want to get back in it? The middle. For SMU, they can do really good things with their middle. They can run rips, they can run slides. The issue with that is you have to have a really good pass to your setter, bait and horse. Let her allow to run that fast offense that coach Sam Erger is wanting her team to find against Texas. SMU, the only seven seed to win last night. The other three across the nation lost. And for more info on what's going on around the country, tune into our Whip Around coverage, the fifth set, the 2023 NCAA Volleyball Championship. Fifth set all weekend on ESPN Plus and the ESPN app.
I was so charged up after our match last night. I was up for hours watching the replay of the fifth set. Everybody doing a great job. Sam Gore, Paul Sunderland, Jen Hoffman, Nicole Brenna, and Kevin Barnett recapping all the action around the country. So if you're a Texas fan, actually a fan of either of these squads, all eyes are on the Stanford sub-region. If Stanford ends up winning both the first and second round, they begin play tonight, they will host. If for some reason they're upset and Texas wins here, the regional semifinal and final would be played here. Never know what's going to happen in the postseason, Alex. We've had some upsets already. As we said, three seven seeds lost last night. We had FSU lose to TCU just moments ago tonight, the sixth seed. Melanie Parra and the Horn Frogs pulling off the upset. Ready to resume play here in Austin. Swindle with the dump. The freshman getting it done. If Swindle wasn't scared of the attempts to dump last night, you can hear already really comfortable early in this that going for the dump. And again, she is offense of her own. In her first career postseason match last night, Swindle had 35 assists, 10 digs, and six blocks. Well, he's got a hand on out of Kana. SMU ends up with the point. It was a great up by Akana. It looked like Skinner just might have slipped. Got off balance. Emma Clothier, the two-time All-American. What an addition she has been coming over from FSU. Named the AAC Player of the Year. Shemay serving, and that one caught Halter. Ace for the Mustangs. That ace on Halter is not something that you see often, if really ever, and that shows you how confident of a server Shemay is going right for the Texas libero. Not sure to happen twice in a row, but you might as well go for it. One of the numerous transfers SMU brought in Shemay, but delivers the service error there. They have hit the portal hard over the past two seasons. Bringing in players who ended up being the conference player of the year, libero of the year, and setter of the year. Texas by seven. O'Neill serving. Clothier. O'Neill unable to pick, get the pancake. Six point set. Great decision by Clothier. When Emma Halter is out and O'Neill is left back, hitters are going to go for the left back. They're going to punish the middle for being back row, and SMU has to take advantage of that rotation. A few years ago, Clothier had one of the greatest seasons in Florida State history, hitting 483. Wenis on the attack. Clothier sliding over. Swindle behind her, Burkmark. Texas will try it again. This time it's Wenis putting away the point. Great line hit by Wenis. She was really pulled into the middle of the court. I thought she would have gone cross. And the fact that she was able to literally turn her shoulders that much and go line shows you she's doing a good job at reading across the net. Couple of kills so far for Wenis. Just missing Ella Swindle with a service error. It was interesting listening to her post match press conference last night, giving all the credit to Asia O'Neill, Madison Skinner. Had a few nerves early, we saw last night, but in general, a tremendous opening match for her in the postseason. Halter. The point for SMU. Texas called it to the net. When you're up five points, it's not as much as a factor, but in the postseason, when the sets get really close, it's points like that that are going to separate teams, especially as you go deeper into the tournament. Right now, Texas is hitting 458, SMU 280. there the Texas block showing up 
That attempt by Wheeler probably would have been a kill yesterday against Texas State, but she has to adjust to the height that Texas has in front of her. That's where you start to see different shots come out. It was a great approach, great swing, but that block in front of her is much bigger than the one she faced last night. Texas had double-digit blocks against the Aggies last night, pushed over by Glover. Wheeler with the point, Jamison Wheeler, who finished the regular season with a team I 345 kills, gets the point. I really like the response from SMU, and Wheeler just getting blocked. You talk about how she has to learn to get around. She gets the next set, and she gets the kill. That shows you how immediate the response and adjustment from SMU is. The Austin native Wheeler played at Lake Travis. Taking advantage of Birdmark being in the front row. That was one of the harder hits Birdmark has had. She's so effective, but you really forget how strong she is. She posts a lot of videos of her in the weight room. She's down and putting that work. Last night, Bella Birdmark had her most kills in nearly two months. Seven against AM. <laughs> charging in Halter. Dug it out. Skinner. Nice hustle defensively by SMU. Asia O'Neill swats that one down for the point. 23-16. Perfect up from Emma Halter. And then Carissa Barnes getting one of her own. But then look at how far off the net Ellis Wendell is when she sets that rick. She's nowhere near the net. That shows you how good she is at finding that setting window. Oh, ace number three for Halter. Another deep floater from Emma Halter. And hitting the net. You always love a good net ace. It's really hard to chase that ball down to the opposite team. Set point, Texas. And there it is. The Longhorns take set number one, 25-16. Fans on their feet as the Longhorns two sets away from advancing to the regional semis. Beautiful night in the capital city. Texas trying to advance to a regional semifinal for the 18th consecutive year. Shelby, in that opening set, the Longhorns hit 448. When they're hitting better than 255 on the year, they're undefeated 18-0, well on their way right now. The Longhorns often stay consistent. Everyone's getting involved. The shots are being taken. SMU looked good in the beginning of the first set. They were hitting different shots. They looked confident. They weren't playing with pressure. And for the Aggies last night, Jamie Morrison, the head coach, said that's going to be the key. You cannot face Texas in the postseason with the pressure on yourself. Because like we said, Texas expects to win tonight. Texas expects to go to the next round. For SMU, put all the pressure on them. Take it off your own shoulders. For the Longhorns leading the way yet again, Madison Skinner, six kills hitting 455 after one set. And Maddie Skinner, even when she's off the net, she is still so lethal because of how accurate she is. Then when she's tied on the net, she's even more lethal because she can go straight down with that ball. SNU has to make sure they have four perfectly in sync hands up against her. For the Mustangs, Shimei with a team high five kills, five of their 11 kills. SMU hit 194. What do the Mustangs have to do to get back in this one? Mustangs gotta relax. Like I said, they looked good beginning in the first set. Go back to that. Start playing like you were last night. And they got blocked a couple of times. I like how the hitters respond immediately and continuously find different shots. That's what they have to keep doing. SMU has never made it to a regional semifinal. This is just the third year in program history. They've made it to the postseason. What a run they have been on. Winners of 16 straight. But running into the defending national champs tonight in their gym. Purdue, what a dig by Emma Halter. But the point goes to SMU to begin the second. Great dig by Halter. A little too tight on the net for Swindle, but I like the sprawling of the body, platform out. Wasn't a shank, and that would have been a shank for almost anybody else.
Sino Uluave, the AAC libero of the year. Diving in Halter again. Madison Skinner, I mean, right now they have no answer for her. That hit from Skinner was almost a whiff. It's almost like she didn't even touch it. But look how straight down it still went, even though she wasn't giving it any power. It was all in the cut, dropping her pinky, lifting the thumb, making sure the ball went right down the left. The scary thing is she's barely breaking a sweat. And dominating right now. Oh my goodness, Emma Halter now with a career high, four aces. Keep going for the same spot, Emma Halter, until SMU can fix it and adjust the seam. Keep going for it. Let's see what she does for an encore. Can't win them all. 36 aces on the year now for the sophomore. Well, historically, it's been Kayle Akana lethal from the service line in the postseason. So far tonight, it's been her teammate Halter. Skinner again. Keep feeding Skinner. It's okay that it's not a secret until SMU can take shots away, lock her or dig her. It doesn't matter that Swindle is continuously going for her. Up to eight kills hitting 538. Kayleigh Akana had five aces in the regular season finale Akana did against Texas Tech. Bodier Akana. Nice dig. Skinner pushes it over. Purdue, Asia O'Neill meet Natalie Purdue. Textbook block from Asia O'Neill. If you're studying how to block, you have to watch this block. Look at Asia's arms, where they finish, over the net, facing to the left, doing a crunch in the air. The mechanics are all perfect. Texas hitting nearly 470 on the night. Clothier punches it up and it drops in. Clothier doing a nice job at reading the defense, seeing that Halter was ready for that deep hit and making that decision to go right over the block, good spot. Clothier, 35th in the nation in hitting percentage, hitting 383. Lauren Olinger serving, another transfer. The senior from Boise State. She's been very good, to say the least, from the service line throughout her career. 156 aces, including one last night. Nearly got another. They set up Wheeler. Barnes was there. The dump by Swindle. SMU was ready. Back to Wheeler. Swindle. Skinner, another point for the All-American. At some point, there's nothing you can say, and you just have to appreciate her for what she is doing. 65 swings over the first two rounds so far of the tournament. 20 kills last night, nine so far tonight. Asia O'Neill. Point Texas. That overpass was the problem for the Aggies early in the match last night. They continuously overpassed, not just to Texas, but to Asia O'Neill. Got to make sure that ball is off the net. Again, hard to believe. Last night was Asia O'Neill's first career double double. Jamison Wheeler. Jenna Wenis emphatically gives Texas the point. Longhorns up by four. SMU right back had to have known that Wenis was going line. There was absolutely no block in front of her. Watch Wenis. Left to your screen. Look how there's no SMU blockers in front of her. They're completely late. They made the wrong read. She had nowhere else to go but line. Yeah, better matchup for her tonight against SMU. Up to three kills. Texas was with an ace, and Madison Skinner right now is doing everything for the Longhorns. 
A timeout by SMU. The defending national champions are rolling in Austin. Ace number five on the night for Texas. We'll be back. Shelby, Texas with five aces tonight, four courtesy of Emma Halter. And Halter, what's making her aces an ace is that she's really testing the seams. She's not going directly for anyone right now. She's making sure that the middle back and left back don't know where the ball is going to go. There's also kind of a curveball at the very end, really strong floater. Well, Texas dominating in every statistical category, hitting 500, five aces, and siding out at 80%. Joust. Of course, Asia gets the best of that one. That is what you call a battle at the net. I'm sure Jermaine loves a good battle at the net from his daughter. And you got to make sure you're the last one standing. That's something you do a lot in practice, and it doesn't happen off turn matches. When it does, you love that opportunity. Jermaine taking this one in, watching his daughter play in this gym for probably the last time in her career. Again, barring an upset at Stanford. O'Neal sliding over again. 10-3 horns. Swindle doing a really good job at spreading out the offense. There's rips, there's slides, and that connection is completely there between Swindle and O'Neal. Asia O'Neal now in her last three postseason matches, still zero attack errors. Skinner. Luave. Wheeler sends it over. Jenna Winnis tooling the block. Well, everything going Texas' way. Jared Elliott, hey, we said last night he was surprised they had a matchup in the first round against a Power 5 team. That was a very tough matchup. They came into this one prepared after that battle last night. I was surprised, too. You look at the Aggies on paper, not the most impressive conference wins but really, really good in person. Texas battle tested. SMU gets the point. 11-4. And the Longhorns looking to advance to a regional semi for the 35th time in program history. 18th straight. Jared Elliott looks on as his team hitting 5-26. Wenis comes flying in for the point. Statement kill by Wenis. Starting with the approach, but the huge arm swing is what ends that play, absolutely. And going for that seam, she was hitting so hard, there's just nothing that SMU could do about it defensively in the back. Wenis, five kills, hitting 444. Again, we thought coming in this would be a better matchup for her. And it has been so far. Charging in from the back row, however, is Naya Shemay. Shemay showing she can do what Skinner does from the back row as well. That vertical, that reach, literally flying in front of the 10-foot line. Great kill. So in the future, this battle between these two teams will be an SEC versus ACC matchup. But tonight, for the last time, it's Big 12 versus AAC, American Athletic Conference. Ace by the Mustangs. Nice ace by Baden Horse. Again, it's all about the seams. When you have that deep float, you want to make sure that the passers don't know whose ball it is. That's why you got to communicate before the serve. Hey, but the seam, I got it. Baden Horse has a couple of aces for the Mustangs, trying to get back in this one. Three aces for Casey Baden Horst. And Batenhorst not just acing, but she's acing Akana, one of the best passers for Texas. And Akana needs to just take over that team, make sure you're stopped when contact happens. Batenhorst and Halter have combined for seven aces. Akana, Swindle. Back to Wenis they go, and another point for Jenna Wenis, kill number six. Nice hands by Akana. That's something that a lot of coaches recruit for. When they have a defensive specialist or a libero, they want them to be able to set as well. And a big sweep again by Wenis. Well, listen, we've seen what 
Skinner and O'Neill have done in big matches. If Wenis gets going, look out. Texas is tough to beat. Swindle serving. Shimei, Wenis. That one missed wide. SME starting to take away that shot that was working earlier for Wenis. Wenis still wanting that line to be open, but not enough room to make that fall in. We saw Jared Ellie give her breather last night in the first set for Kenna Miller. Remember, that was the first time she has played in the postseason with the Longhorns. Tonight having a strong performance so far. Stronger than last night. Julian the block, Bella Bergmark. Texas, so many weapons. Back up by six. And SMU is doing the footwork. The problem on the block is right now, their arms. When they're jumping, they're jumping straight up. They're not pressing over the net. And the size and physicality for Texas, a major advantage in this one. Barnes. Swooping in is Purdue with the point. Perfect play by Purdue. And not an outside, right to your screen. Look at her come in. Look where she finishes her approach. Her setter's really pulling her in. That's in order to take Texas off the block. Luave serving the transfer from Toledo. The AAC Libero of the Year had never played Libero before transferring over to SMU as an outside hitter. The service error there makes it 15-9. Look who's serving. Shamay puts that one down with ease. Nice set by Colin. She was all the way to the left front and flicked that ball all the way across the opposite end of the court. That is some strength with the setting. She's got seven kills. The Mustangs within five. Cannot afford to fall down two sets to nothing to the defending champs, Asia O'Neill. Nice hustle. Luave, Purdue off the block. Skinner taps it into the block. Halter was there. Phillips. Purdue again. Diving for it, Madison Skinner. Olawave answers for SMU. Purdue pushes it over. Emma Halter flying all over the place. Skinner with the point. Scrappy play from SMU. Both sides going all out, but when Maddie Skinner is that tight on the net, there's nothing you can do. No one else can get this kill but Skinner. Look how tight that ball is. Anyone else would tip a roll shot. Not Skinner. She comes down with the hammer. That felt like a crucial rally in this one. SMU could have pulled within four. Shemay wide. Texas now up by seven. Great hit, though, by Shemay. The power was there. She was going right for the line, barely out. Keep being aggressive. Keep going for your shot. Texas with five aces so far tonight. Shemay toward the block. She's putting this team on her back. SMU is so consistent. They're confident. When they make an error, they want the ball back in the same exact spot. And they don't try and trick you. They're still committing to that hard hit, and they're getting it second time around. Service error. Mustangs cannot have that happen if they want to get back in this one. Skinner ready to serve for Texas. She's got 10 kills, three digs, a block at ace at hitting 529. Akana, swindle. Nice block by the Mustangs. 
When it pushes it over and it finds the floor. Even when out of system, Texas is doing great things. And everyone's stepping in. Swindle is covering. Akana is setting. Everyone's doing different jobs. It's working out for them. SMU came in with the 73rd best block in the nation, blocks per set. Winnis has had strong matches against teams that aren't highly ranked. The block, Texas! Are you kidding me? Longhorns pulling away in set number two. Six aces for the Horns. Two by Skinner. Great job by Uluave from making it. Three Skinner on the other end. Wenis waits for it. Here comes Wheeler. That one wide. Texas by 10, largest lead of the set. SMU trying to stay aggressive, but O'Neill and Swindle are forcing the Mustangs outside to hit different shots. The line is taken away for SMU right now. Texas hitting 453, 300 points higher than SMU. Asia O'Neill and Wenis were there. Wheeler again, the Texas block. Uh, the Longhorns dominating right now, Shelby. Texas is so in system. O'Neill is the guardian of the front row. Nothing is passing her. You've got to keep the ball off the net for SMU. Texas up to five blocks. Asia O'Neill, five kills, four blocks, hitting 556. Clothier with the point. SMU needed that badly. Good things happen for SMU when they can run their middles. And Clothier did a really good job at being successful with the slide yesterday. It's a matter of being in system enough to find that fast offense. Mustangs with four aces, four service errors. O'Neal. Charging it is Skinner, but SMU earns the point. Rare double from Swindle. She knew right when that was coming off her hands, that ball was a double. Had a little awkward spin, and her and her David Hunt have a really good relationship. He's really improved her confidence. That setting window, good coach for the setters. Swindle with 19 assists so far tonight after having 35 last night in her postseason debut. Halter unable to get past Wenis in time to save it. Awkward miscommunication that you don't see often from Texas. Wenis with the first pass, but not able to get out of the way. But she probably can't hear Halter. In this environment, these players literally can't hear each other call each other off the pass. Today's for SMU. Wheeler. Jenna Wenis. Wenis up to eight kills, second most on the team tonight. Wenis using every part of her body to gain that power. Look at her body snap after she hits. Look how far she's bringing in her chest to her knees. That gives her so much power to make that ball cut where it did. And the confidence for Wenis, who's now hitting 375. O'Neal. Shemay got all that one, but O'Neal was ready. Uluave. Wheeler. Wenis. Another one. Set point coming up for Texas. What a rebound performance by Jenna Wenis here in round two. Asia O'Neill serving for the set. And there it is. Fitting that O'Neill caps it off with an ace Texas. One set away from advancing to the regional semifinals.
Shelby here, Texas dominating, and it's Asia O'Neill and probably her final match in this gym, putting on another strong performance. And O'Neill with five kills, already four blocks. She's had three matches this season with 10 or more blocks. Two of those matches for the past two matches. She is completely going off at the front. It is hard to get 10 blocks, and she is continuously doing it. And the fact that she got her first career double-double last night shows you how she continuously improves, even in her sixth year. That is strange when you think about it. She had not recorded double-digit blocks in a match until this season. But as you said, she has done it multiple times this year for SMU hitting 136. Naya Shimei, eight kills to lead the way, but they are in a hole down two sets to nothing. Texas hitting 448, seven aces out blocking SMU five to two as the Longhorns have the Mustangs on the ropes as we enter set number three here from Gregory Jim. SMU has 10 hitting errors. That sounds like a lot, but the difference in score, that's really not the game changer. It's simply that Texas is just that overwhelming. In my opinion, I think SMU's playing pretty good right now. Just because their hitting percentage doesn't look good, that's a whole math equation. That includes digs. Texas is not letting anything hit the floor right now. And those errors that SMU have, it's not in the net. It's not being stuffed in the block. It's hitting the ball out barely. It's trying to find shots. It's trying to go line. And that's something that Sam Erger says, I'm comfortable with my team being aggressive, being physical, trying to test the boundaries of what they can and can't do. No matter what happens in this set, you're looking at one of the best young coaches in the business, Sam Erger, the job she has done with SMU, 48 wins in two years, AAC Coach of the Year. Again, they hadn't lost a set since October heading into tonight. But down 2-0. Swindle, Halter. Here is Wheeler. Good rally to begin the third. Skinner ends it by tooling the block. Kill number 11 for Madison Skinner. Great rally to begin the third. Again, SMU wants to extend the point as long as possible. The attempts were there. The digs were there. But right now, Texas is just that overwhelming. Texas has nine points off 12 Emma Halter serves. Again, she has a career high four aces tonight. Shemay. Keeping in Shemay, I really like the smile right now. The body language is there, the confidence. That's what SMU needs, especially this early in the third set. She's got 23 kills in two matches in Austin in the first two rounds, but her team in trouble. Tied at one here in the third until Molly Phillips unties it and again. There is a player down on the floor right now for SMU. Jamison Wheeler, slow to get up. They will check on Wheeler, the Austin native. And this collision happened because of the cross seams right here. That's what is supposed oh. to happen, not the collision, but the right back, the middle back cutting each other off. And Celia Cullen and Jamison Wheeler colliding. Scary moment there. And they both seem to be okay and get a hand from the crowd here at Gregory Gym. We yeah. talked about it earlier. It's really hard to hear one another in this environment. The postseason Gregory Gym, it is loud, and these players are both putting bodies on the floor. They are going above and beyond, trying to get the ball up. That's the only reason the collision happened. They both stay in there. Wheeler shaking that one off. Texas up by one here in the third set with Kay Leakana serving. The winner moves on to the regional semifinals. Shemay. Skinner pulling the block. One of the lower sets Hulk Swindle has given Skinner this match right now, trying to make Skinner speed up that approach. Didn't work out, but Skinner still got the kill, went for that tip. Madison Skinner up to 12 kills. Akana, that one just missed. 
SMU right now. You have to hold on to that ball as long as possible. Make every rotation extend two points, three points. You want your server to keep it as long as possible when you're down like this against Texas. Oluwave. Five aces so far tonight for SMU. Swindle. O'Neal sliding over. Gets to the point again. Hard to believe. This will probably be it tonight for the career of Asia O'Neal, Molly Phillips, Bella Bergmark, Riley Heinrich as well, Chris Barnes in this gym. And the only way they could host if they go on to win the regional semifinals is if Stanford gets upset. Otherwise, Texas is heading out west. And if they go on to win tonight. Texas has a bone to pick with Stanford. One of the Longhorns' four losses earlier this year came at the hands of Stanford. Jared Elliott said, we were a completely different team at that point in the year. For injuries, they dealt with Asia O'Neal. Madison Skinner was sick as well. He had a brand new freshman setter. A far cry from this team we're watching now. And a lot of coaches say we were a different team at the beginning of the year, but he means it. And us covering the Longhorns all season, they have looked so much more relaxed the past few matches. And against Texas Tech, it just showed you they never took their foot off the gas, and that's what's bleeding to the postseason for them. Ellis Swindle here, Jenna Wenis, who's had a strong night. That continues. Double-digit kills for Wenis, who's hitting better than 400. Even when the set is in the middle of the 10-foot line for Wenis, she's still so good at making sure she commits to that hard hit. Asia O'Neal, one ace tonight, 103 for her career. Batted over by Purdue, and it falls in between Wenis and O'Neal. Purdue's done such a good job at changing up her shots. And that's a spark that's being lost for SMU on the court right now because she is so good at rallying her team and making sure she tests the Texas block. And a winning stall in there now, the freshman out of San Antonio. 7-4 Longhorns. Ella Swindle ready to serve now for Texas. The Longhorns hitting 477, seven aces. And siding out at nearly 78%. Texas block was there. How about Celia Cullen? But that one, too strong. SMU calling for the touch. Point Mustangs. I like when you point out Celia Cullen because her set, she can be anywhere on the floor and make sure there's no spin on the ball and put it in the perfect hitting window. Even her bump passes are right exactly where they need to be. We haven't talked about her too much. She has been phenomenal. The AAC setter of the year, former transfer from Michigan State, doing a great job for SMU this entire season. Molly Phillips. Wheeler. Emma Halter. Here comes Skinner. Oh, hold on, SMU getting the point. Texas players want Jarrett Elliott to challenge, and he will. And huge approach by Skinner. Look to the right of your screen, see if one, the ball falls in, but two, does an SMU player touch it right here? It's gonna go right of your screen. That looked like it could have been out from that view. I think it Let's hit off the tape. It hit off the tape. I don't think there was a touch at the front. Personally, that shot looked like it wasn't in either. Different angles could show you different things. Let's see this view right here. Does the ball go in or out? I don't think it, anyone touched the ball. Oh, cut off right there. Okay, I think the ball went out. Now let's look at there was a touch. That looks all net to me. Again, yeah. doesn't matter what I think, but in my opinion, 
I think SMU has the point. So it hit the net there as far as being in or out. Here's another angle. Now, SMU will get the point. Yeah, that's out. But I love when all the players look at their coaches and say, no, 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 touch, in or out, and the coach goes right to the table and grabs the green card. You love when a coach gets involved in the game like that. Responding to his players, listening to them. And that, that's a moment to build trust with your team as well, especially in the postseason for new players that have not been here before. Do we get, did the hand touch right there? Clothier in the back. Okay. Well, let's see we if have the ball some contact. Moves. It does. It does right there, let's the contact from Clothier, the senior. Let's do another, I want to see the full thing. I want to see if it moves after it crosses her body. That's harder to see right here. Yeah, if anything, it's going to be Clothier touching the ball. Let's see right here. You can see it change angles, change direction. It appears at least that it was touched by Clothier as the review continues. Let's see right here. There. Yep, okay. Wow. After fully committing to SMU getting the point, I do think Clothier might have touched that ball. And now it makes sense that that's what Skinner was saying touch for. I thought she was looking for a touch at the net. But nice eye, that was, if, if she did touch it, it was barely there. Oh, don't own up to it if you're SMU. You say you didn't touch the ball. You forced your Elliott to grab that green card. Well, for the Mustangs, this is obviously a big moment down two sets to nothing. You're trying to hang in there in the third set with your season on the line. Tense moments for Sam Erger and the Mustangs. They have finished the review. And the call has been overturned. Point Texas. It was touched by Clothier. Yeah, that was a good call. I truly believed it was SMU's point. But then thinking about Clothier touching the ball, I didn't even consider the left back because it was that barely touched. But yeah, I, she definitely looked like she touched the ball. And for SMU, what looked like a one-point set is now a three-point Texas lead. They took the first set 25-16, the second one 25-14. Here's Barnes. Charging in Shemay, Bella Bergmark stood tall. Wheeler, again Bergmark. Molly Phillips with the point. Nice kill by Phillips. The effort is there from SMU. Those attacks would have gotten killed on anybody else besides Texas. The block is just that big. It is so hard to cross them. And once it's on your side, they're going to get the kill. And Molly Phillips. Hit nearly 450 over the final month of the regular, regular season, getting hot at the right time. Shemay, Halter, Bella Bergmark, Jamison Wheeler, point SMU within three. Perfect time for a tool from Wheeler. Dropped her pinky, lifted her thumb, just flicked the ball to the left, making sure there's no way that ball dropped in front of her. And Sam Herbert told us she went from touching 10 feet to 10-5 in just a single season. I like that Coach Erger said, I would refuse to believe that if I didn't actually see the video, the stats, all the paper. Skinner on the attack. Back the other way, Shemay. And SMU fighting back here in the third set within two. 10 kills for Shemay. She's really been tested up at the block. She's taken five airs, not bad airs. Airs trying to go for the line shot. She's continuing to try and find the, the correct hit. Mustangs heading to the ACC after this year. Skinner. Nice coverage. Marissa Barnes is there. Skinner, three ball. Batenhorst. Shemay again. Texas gets the point. Frustrating hit for Shemay. That was a great swing, trying to purposely get the tool. And oftentimes, hitters avoid the block or they use the block in their favor, whether it's touching the fingertips, making it go out, or getting the tool. She had the right idea, but Skinner is just that unmatched at the front. Skinner. 
Forget about it. SMU just can't make anything fall. SMU is doing nothing wrong. Texas is just that good. They're going to dig you. They're going to get a kill on you. You can give them your best effort. They're still going to beat you at it. It's been smiles all night long for Madison Skinner. 24 swings, just one attack error for Skinner. 14 kills. Nice dig by the freshman Swindle. Back to Chimay. Halter. Olawabe. Texas gets the point. Uh, SMU arguing that one, and we'll have a challenge from the Mustangs. This challenge could have been avoided. Ulawave had the second touch. He had the bump set, but it was way too tight on the net. Look how tight this ball is. It's almost impossible for Shimei to even get it. If you're bump passing, you have to make sure that is perfect for your hitter. And challenging that Phillips touched the net. Touch the net. Look how high, regardless, look how Phillips' hands, look how far over her hands get at the net. Usually, blockers go straight up, barely over, but her arms can literally go over the net. They're trying to see who was in the net, if anybody. A lot of movement. That could have been the ball, though. You talked about the length and physicality of Texas. That's a tough matchup for SMU. The Mustangs have just one player on their roster over 6-2. But you saw Phillips there at 6-5, Asia O'Neill at 6-3, and Swindle 6-3. A tough, tough matchup for the Mustangs. A lot of teams talk about Texas physicality. What coaches mean by that is they're half of it's they're really, really strong, they're tall, but half of it is they are actually talented. You could have a 6'5 hitter at a smaller D1 school and not figure out their body. Texas has got it all figured out. Call stands. Confirmed point, Texas. Longhorns by five. Sam Erger not thrilled with the review. Texas wins this set. They are moving on to their 35th regional semifinal in program history. Halter. Marissa Barnes. Madison Skinner, Olave with the dig. Great dig. Shimei again. That kill is a hard thing to do for anyone. Going in between Asia O'Neill and Molly Phillips, but Shimei read it perfectly. There was barely a split, and she went right for it. Great IQ, great eye, and great decision. 30 swings by Shimei, most by any player on either team. Skinner waiting. High off the block. Joust. Sliding in Barnes. Point SMU, but Barnes has had a strong defensive performance tonight. The Mustangs, however, back within three. Great resiliency shown right here by the AAC champs. Texas dominated the first two sets. Mustangs trying to keep their season alive. But a service error right there makes it 13-9. You really want to stay aggressive in a match like this. You don't want to give your opponent a three option pass. But you also want to make sure you're not giving your opponents points for free. Kayla Akana, 126 career aces. Looking for her first of this one. Skinner. Mason Skinner taps it over, sliding in with Cullen. Purdue. Skinner. Oluave going to the floor, but unable to keep it in play. Madison Skinner, kill number 15. And great effort by Oluave. 
She was stopped in her base. She committed. She tried to get it back to target. Skinner's just that powerful. 30 kills over her last five sets going back to last night. Hitting 483 tonight. Just one attack error. McConnell. More Skinner. Just keep feeding her. She has been unstoppable. Texas, 10 points away from moving on. Suluave made the right read, but the platform wasn't facing the right spot. When you're left back, you have to drop your left shoulder, raise the right shoulder, so that perfect angle, that sweet spot, when contact's made, it's gonna go to your setter. Skinner, 16 kills, two aces, two blocks, and six digs. Clean off the floor a little bit here. Texas 13 and 2 at this gym this season. Possibly the last match here this year. Texas offensively, just right off the bat, been so efficient, hitting 439 right now. Just four attack errors all night for the Longhorns. Clothier, two-time All-American. That's the fast tempo offense Sam Erger is trying to have her team run tonight. Again, running through the middle. It's all in the serve receive. Everything going right in that play for SMU. Clothier trying to rally the troops, the veteran from FSU. Charging in is Skinner. Good grief. That is just straight power from the junior Madison Skinner. No other way to describe that than charging in. At that point, you're asking you put your helmet on, just get stopped, turn away from the ball, make sure he doesn't hit your face, and just put a platform out. 38 kills in two nights for Madison Skinner. Great set from Cullen. Point SMU. Mullen doing the right thing in that rotation where Asia O'Neill's in left back and Maddie Skinner is in middle back. You want to avoid the right back because that's where the actual DS is. Take advantage of when the middles are playing in the back row for that one rotation. 23 assists for Cullen. She's top 20 in the nation this year in assists per set. Saved by Wheeler. Free ball. Here comes Skinner again. Look how unique this approach from Skinner is. Watch her feet right here. She's so off balance, and she still can make that kill happen. Look at the, where the ball lands. Look to your screen. Look at her feet in the air. She can do anything. She's that athletic. The Skinner show continues. 19 kills. Clothier. Texas can feel it. SMU and SMU calls timeout the Longhorns with all the momentum in the world. Well, no matter what, for the Mustangs again, it's been a terrific year, and Sam Erger is building something special with SMU as they get ready to head to the ACC. I mean, to go on a stretch of 16 consecutive wins, not losing a set for an entire month, just a tremendous year. Best winning percentage in program history and conference play. Went 18-1 in the AAC. And you can tell by talking to her, the focus, the discipline, the attention. She is building a great foundation with the Mustangs. SMU is a phenomenal team. Right now, the issue is that Texas just has lethal hitters. And I grew up going to these matches since I was probably seven. We talked about it earlier, Alex. Texas hitters have wrapped their fingers from day one. It's like a signature, a rite of passage. When you are a hitter at Texas, you wrap every single finger, and that's supposed to help the block when the hit, when the ball hits your hand and makes your hand stronger. But it's also kind of that intimidation factor. You know how Texas is going to look. They're clean. They look good. That's part of their, their what they've always done. The defending national champions in good shape right here in round two in front of the hometown fans. 
at Gregory Gym. The first title back in 81, the NCAA championship in 88. Of course, Jared Elliott's first in 2012. And he did it again last year, cementing his legacy here in Austin. Texas looking to make it to a regional semifinal for the 18th consecutive time. 17 already the longest active streak in the nation. Here we go, off the swindle serve. Clothier with the point. Great hit by Clothier. Doing a lot of things for her team and bringing different experience, transferring from Florida State. And like you said, she used to touch 10 feet, now she touches 10 five, all within just a few months. On the night, the leaders in the kills department for Texas Skinner with 19, Shanae with 11 for SMU. Mustangs running out of time. Halter. Molly Phillips, 20 13. Shanae read that ball right from Phillips. She committed to the line. The problem was. She moved her arms and contact was made. You have to make sure your arms are stopped and pressed back to your setter. Molly Phillips hitting 500, Skinner 500, O'Neill 462, and Wenis 421. Jame off the tape. Here comes Phillips again. Texas four points away. Right of your screen, look how high Phillips touches. And if you don't have four hands against her, she's going to go right through that block, and it's going to be a kill. And probably her final match in this gymnasium. Wheeler. Here comes Skinner. Tools the block. Kill number 20. Back-to-back -back 20 kill nights for Madison Skinner. For Texas at this point, experiment. Do the crazy plays, the hits you don't normally do. Do everything to experiment going into that next round. Madison Skinner, 85 swings in two nights. But there is Shimei yet again. Shimei channeling Skinner. I love the relentlessness from her. She doesn't care the score. She's coming at you even with six hands in front of you. She's not going for tips or rolls. She is going for the attacking kill. Casey Batenhorst, three aces. But the service error. Texas two points away. Here is Asia O'Neill. That's a front row. Molly Phillips, Asia O'Neill, and Maddie Skinner. Halter. Shemay. We'll give her credit. She has battled all night long. Naya Shemay, the senior transfer out of Wyoming. 13 kills. No one else on SMU even has double digits. O'Neal. Great dig. Ulawabu. The tremendous dig. Skinner. Here we go. Match point. And here comes Riley Heinrich, one of the five seniors playing here at Gregory Gym for probably the last time in their careers. For a trip to the regional semifinals. The adrenaline flowing. Match point number two coming up for Texas. SMU stays alive.
third match point coming up for the Longhorns. Oluwabe serving for SMU. Impressive performance by the Longhorns in round two. We'll put a bow on this one as Texas sweeps SMU. The Longhorns headed to the regional semifinals for the 18th consecutive season.